Welcome to Think Tech. This is Movies We Can Learn From. I'm Jay Fidel. Today we're going to review the Civil War movie. Uh, what does it tell us about America's future? Mm. And we're going to talk about exactly what that what that means, what that means to us. We know it's scary. And we're going to talk about its premise and um, and the divisiveness in the United States and how it could turn into a civil war and a national dynamic violence and tragedy that would follow. So this is a very interesting movie. It's a scary movie. Um, I, it, it doesn't get more than 2.6 uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and I think the reason is that uh, it's a scary movie. People don't want to watch it. It turns them off. Um, what about you? Can you give us the background of this movie? Who made it? Why did they make it? Uh, and what is it about? So I guess he's dealing with the current events, you know, of January 6th, which was the harbinger for this. It was directed and written by Alex Garland, and it stars Kirsten Dunst. Uh, she's a, a lady journalist, uh, Wagner Mora, and uh, I guess the star would be the young girl, uh, Kali Spaney, yeah, yeah. Stephen, Stephen McKinney. Uh, and it's playing uh, for money on Prime and, for that matter, YouTube. I caught this because somebody went to the actual movie theater and one of our hosts told me this was a movie that was scary and i didn't watch it until it came on on cable but when it was on cable i watched it and now i understand what he was saying it's scary we have divisiveness in this country we have people who like guns and who have guns who and are an inch away from using guns we have states that don't like being in the union anymore we're in, in many ways, uh, you know, we still have a civil war going on. And the premise of this movie um, is that um, it, it turns into violence, um, which is not hard to understand. We have all these gun incidents happening like every day, every week all around the country, people using guns. And and we have the gun lobby that, um, you know, that doesn't want to regulate guns. And we have a Congress that doesn't want to regulate guns. And people don't like the federal government. They don't like democracy. They don't like the Constitution or the rule of law. Um, and they think we'd be better off without any of those things. So you start there and then you take that a step further. You take it to open violence. And this movie is about how groups of states make alliances and secede from the Union. Yes. It's a civil war. And yeah. they're well armed and they fight other groups. Uh, and the country is coming apart. So it's a story of some journalists who decide they want to go to Washington and find out what in the world is happening in Washington because the, the president is under siege <clears throat> and the government is under siege. And the military, such as it is, is under siege by all these secessionist movements. It's very violent. Um, and in a way, uh, you can connect it up to where we are now. So your thoughts about it, George? Yeah, basically author authoritarian president, right? Who keeps telling people that things are going to be good, that they're going to put down the, this, the, the resurrection and whatever. It's these reporters, right? that decide to go from New York to Washington because they they want to interview the president, this authoritarian president, right, in the White House, right? So they get on uh, in, the, in, a, in their van, right, and they start going. But between New York and Washington, there's fighting in the streets. I mean, everybody, you know, you see people shooting each other. It's like a dystopian vision of what will be when the country starts to be becoming a civil war. And it seems like California and Texas are the two main secessionists. You know, one is conservative, one is uh, more, more uh, you know, progressive. So I don't understand why they did that, but it's both Texas and California and the whole, West, it's called the Western secession, right? I'm sure there were other secession states. Florida was involved in that too. I don't, Florida yeah. had some sort of alliance with the, with the Western group. As they're going t toward Washington, they're dealing with all these things. Now, two two of one of the reporters is originally from Hong Kong. They're, they're called Hong Kongers, right? He picks up another one of his Hong Kong friends, but is he's not with them, right? In the same truck, right? And in, in the same van, right? And then what happens is he comes, he's following them, right? But they don't know who's following them. And someone's coming, getting closer and closer to their van. 
And it seems to be it's this their Hong Kong friend, right? Or co-colleague, work colleague. He decides he wants to get into, into the van, but, you know, so he's playing these games to try to jump into the van. Well, young woman who you mentioned, she's an aspiring reporter and she jumps into the other van. They basically are trying to find this young girl, right? And two vans are separated. Let me go back for a minute, George. Okay. This is a, a road trip. Yeah, yeah. They start out wherever they are, their home base, and they organize a group that is courageous enough to go through, you know, the violent parts of the country. And right. they can't go directly to Washington. They have to go sort of west and then south and then east. And they get a tour that way. They get a tour of what's going on. You really have to be courageous to go into a, uh, an area which you know is is all violent. So the essential group is this uh, this older gentleman. A uh, reporter, he's part of it. This uh, this this war correspondent who has seen lots of action. Yeah, this yeah. very young woman who kind of uh, she's a, kind of a stowaway, and she's the hero, mm -hmm. um, and she comes with them. Uh, and the driver, and uh, and this is their adventure, trying to get to Washington. Why? So they can interview the president. That's what they're after. They're all into journalism and they run into this other van. Now there's one moment, which I think is worth mentioning um, that takes place where the journalists are interviewing a person who has a, a man who has a sniper rifle. Yeah. And he's, firing, he's firing across a, a large field. I mean, it might be a field in, in Gettysburg, you know, or the Eastern part of the country, uh, but rural. And he's shooting across the field with his sniper rifle and he keeps shooting. And they say to him, they're curious, they're journalists. They say to him, uh, who are you shooting at? He says, um, I don't know. This, this is interesting. This is the nature of civil war and violence, you know, which, which have a, a life of its own. And they say, why are you shooting uh, these people on the other side of this field? And he says, because they're shooting at me. And the implication is everybody's shooting at everybody. That is one scene that I think portrays uh, Alex Garland's um, view of the matter. Um, this is complete chaos and with weapons, and nobody is safe. Another really remarkable scene is when they're um, in, in this uh, kind of rural town, and um, there's no sign of war at all. Um, and they're walking through the town, and there's some dress shops there and some um, ordinary small town retail businesses. And then so much so that they stop and they go into a dress shop and they say to the woman, do you understand that there's a civil war going on? There's violence all over the country. Uh, there are these armies attacking. There's people with guns everywhere. And she says, well, we don't get involved in that. That's her line. This is kind of um, the complacency come current, where this small town doesn't want to be involved, just as so many other people right now don't want to be involved. They ignore the reality. And these people in the small town, which you know is going to be involved soon enough, um, they don't want to be involved. Anyway, then then fast forward to your um, recollection of the the two cars, and they get separated. Um, and the young girl... And she wants to be a reporter. She wants to cover this huge, big story. And she has a camera with her and she's taking pictures everywhere. And, and you see, you know, uh, the interlinear copies of the pictures that she's taking. She gets in that car that's very courageous and silly of her. And the car gets separated. They let her find her, right? They find her among a bunch of guys with, you know, um, assault rifles uh, who have killed an enormous number of people. It's out of Bobby Yar. Um, and it's a big pit of people they have killed. And they're they're um, you know, they're they're people who kill. They're they're people who stand around and kill people. And and so there's this extraordinary conversation. I don't know if you remember the conversation. They're asking everybody where they're from, you know. So if you're from the United States, from Minnesota, one says Minnesota, the other one says Oklahoma or something like that, the blonde lady. And then, then they ask this other guy, their buddy, and he says, China, because he's from Hong Kong. And then they shoot him. They kill him. Well, it's about isolation. Isolationism. Yeah. Um, it's about, um, 
you know, anti-Asian, yeah. anti-European, about bigotry gone wild. Yeah. And it's yeah. about people who, who are so bigoted that they kill anybody who is not identified as, quote, an American. And the great line is, uh, who are you guys? Are it's you guys funny. American? Right, right. This right. Is, yeah, you're American. And this next line is, well, yeah, what, what kind of American are you? This is a very dangerous question. It's standing there with this pit full of dead bodies in front of them. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, I mean, what, what you get is the ultimate nightmare of um, these guys gone wild with their guns uh, and their bigotry. And nobody, no guardrails at all, nobody to stop them. So finally, um, you know, they get away from they get away from them, uh, not, not at the cost of having one one of their number wounded, uh, I mean, fatally wounded, and they keep on traveling on their trip to Washington. And, and you see, you know, you see all these things along the way. You, you see the country unraveling. They get to a military base, which I find very interesting and. You know, you can't you can't tell whether it's the military or the secessionists. I guess it's the military, but they're all heading off to defend Washington or maybe attack it. It's not clear because everybody is unleashed, unhinged. And they finally get to Washington and they go through this bombed out city yep. where all the great monuments and institutions are being destroyed in front of their eyes. Everybody is claiming they're operating under the under the flag. They're all claiming, everybody is claiming that they're patriotic. The flags of these secessionist movements all look like the American flag. And then finally, they get into the White House. And that is the most striking thing of all. And there are military people who are with them who have been ordered to kill the president, to assassinate him. Yes. And they go into the, uh, I guess it's the press briefing room that we've all seen. A uh, hundred times in the White House, and this is woman who is apparently the press secretary. Exactly right. She says, um, "She, uh, uh, the president would like to negotiate with you. He'd like to arrange safe passage to two places." And I find that the selection of the two places very interesting. One is Alaska. Somehow, Alaska is a place the president wants to get mm, safe passage to, and the other is Greenland. What's ironic is that Trump wanted to buy Greenland at one point. They wait for her to express this uh, desire to negotiate. And then they say something like, we're not going to negotiate. And they shoot her on the spot. A lot of people in this movie get shot on the spot. Exactly. And and then they go in and find the president. And then you have this remarkable scene where they're about to assassinate the president. But one of the guys in the press, in, the, in our little touring group of press people, says, wait, don't assassinate him. I yeah. have to interview him. Exactly. They want what to is your him. question? Right? And his question is, do you have any last words? Yeah. And the president says, yeah, tell him not to kill me. And that's the end. He says, okay, we got it. We've had our interview. We got it on camera. Yeah. And they kill him. It's all bizarre, all violent. Getting back to, you know, elevated feelings, you know, you've got different factions, you've got civil war. That's basically what you got here. Very dystopian, disturbing movie. Anybody who wants to give it a, a, a very low rating, they're just ostrich. They're just sticking their head in the ground and they want to deal with this reality. Yeah, I think the 2.6 rating is really indicative of something that we have been thinking about and talking about for a long time. People are in a world of complacency. They're in a world of denial. They don't think this can happen in the U.S. Um, but if you look at, uh, you know, Trump's politics and his um, promises for, you know, his his vengeance promises for his return to power, uh, you say, well, maybe it can. You know, the scenario would be something that people protest what he's doing because he's violating all the rules and, you know, the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all that. So they get out in the streets. And Trump does what Trump has threatened to do before, um, call it an insurrection. It's a very ironic use of the term, and um, and to call in the military, the you know the national military, um, under the Insurrection Act, um, to shoot them down, um, and then what you have is effectively a civil war. This is entirely possible, and I and I think people don't like giving it high marks because it. 
it's an attempt to uh, warn them about what might happen, uh, to warn them of the dangers we face in only a few months. Uh, and so um, I think they don't want to hear it. Um, they they don't they want to be complacent. They want to ignore it. They want to deny it. Um, and and so they don't want to see it. It's just that it it somehow informs you. It informs you about where this country could go, but it is a a, a reasonable array of possibilities about how mm, the the flaws we see in the social fabric of this country could evolve, yeah. uh, given uh, the failure of the federal government and the failure of the of the civil society in the country and the the failure of any kind of control uh, over mm, insurrectionists. I can understand why Alex Garland wanted to make the movie. I can understand why people, some people don't want to see the movie. Yeah, yeah. But I also feel that it informs us about things we, we need to imagine, we need to see. I mean, maybe, just maybe, this movie would help us deal with the oncoming, the oncoming crisis. At least it gives us the notion that there is a, a possible crisis coming, yeah. that if you connect the dots, this is the kind of scenario that we might have. And it's if you do idea. that, then maybe you will take steps to try to avoid it, or at least recognize that that it's um, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, a very disturbing movie, Jay. And, uh, you know, I would suggest for anyone to watch it because you, we know there's going to be an election and our former president Trump has said that he's he's going to even 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 things up you know he's going to he's got revenge so uh, you know you've never had a president like Donald Trump you know and, and, and even in the Republican party even Nixon wasn't like this it's a disturbing um scenario and as i said the harbinger january 6 was the harbinger that's what this movie's trying to say. It's disturbing, but it's reality. Just connecting the dots in our world yeah. instead of turning our, our backs on those dots, you know. Um, the, the Proud Boys and all those other, um, you know, groups out there that are so well armed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, then the, and then the Supreme Court and so many other organizations in this country are encouraging them to be well armed. And the fact that we have gun violence with assault weapons uh, almost every day. Um, if you start connecting those things, uh, you realize there are those people out there that live through their guns. If you let them go, let them do their thing. And if you encourage them and stoke them the way Trump has you know, continually done, uh, you can make them into warring factions just like uh, Alex Garland portrays in the movie and they will be out there um, doing violence and uh, doing bloodthirsty killing on the streets of America. It's uh, it's not a happy picture. Uh, and I find it interesting that, um, you know, our ratings may be higher than um, the way people feel about it, the way Rotten Tomatoes feels about it. So my question to you is what rating do you give this very strange movie, this movie that is intended to uh, trouble you and does trouble you. I'll give it a 10, even though there's some issues, you know, with the production and stuff. Is the, 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 the message is so powerful. I'll give it a 10. I mean, I don't care if there were some production issues. It's just phenomenally mind opening, eye opening. You know, how do you feel, Jay? I feel the same way. Um, you know, it's it's not a question of, uh, you know, how, how was the color correction and how was the, mm, you know, the direction and production elements. Of, it's it's a question of what was he trying to do and did he do a good job? So, and what he was trying to do is raise awareness about the, these possibilities. Did he do a good job? Well, he certainly raised my awareness and he should raise the awareness of anybody who follows these threads uh, in the news and, and the sea changes in our national fabric. And and so I think he succeeds in that. Whether he succeeds to the point of raising awareness so that people try to actually head this off is another question, because it may be that it's already too far gone 
Um, and you can head it off. It has a life of its own. It will be what it'll be. Um, if it if it if it is uh, as he portrays it, or maybe somewhere on that continuum, this case sera sera, les jeux sont faits out of Sartre. I think um, it's certainly worth watching. On the other hand, um, there are some people <laughs> that probably shouldn't watch it. <laughs> they'll they'll be too disturbed, <laughs> and they will only be you know turned off. Well, thank you, George. I give it a ten. Also, I think we agree that it's a valuable piece in the landscape and uh, it's not frothy in any way. And what it tells us is all those frothy movies out there uh, that, you know, that act as a kind of opiate for us are not relevant. This one clearly is relevant. Is relevant, definitely. George Cason, our best movie reviewer. Thank here you. are movies you can learn from and we certainly have learned and been informed um, by this movie, Civil War. You can see it on Prime. You can see it on YouTube. It costs money on either of those places, but it's well worth it. Aloha, George. Aloha, Jay. Thank you.